morning. Welcome to the MEM Ed Show. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal, and you're watching the show where we put you in front of where the action is in the markets. And welcome. Of course, we are seeing quite a bit of red on our screens today. Let's get started because what we are going to be looking at is first and foremost, we will go ahead and review where the current markets are, what expectations are going forward. And then also uh, one of the items we're gonna be looking at is the best ways that you can capitalize on some areas of strength. One area we will take a look at are some of these gold stocks that are rallying in the face of the uncertainty within the broader markets and uh, looking to strength. So that's where we are going to be again, gold, and there will be a couple of other areas. And then also uh, I was going to cover stocks that are due to report earnings this week, but instead we are going to re review areas and ways that you can Combat volatility, and, and really that's not the proper word, but ways that you can effectively trade given the increase. Volatility is up 20% today. I believe we're at about the 23 level. We're, we will go ahead and take a look at that. But there are some simple steps that you can take. So actually, before we review the current markets, let's just take a moment and uh just want to see if my screen actually was not shared. Okay, yeah, let's take a minute here. Take a look at ways that you can successfully trade. And I use that word successful. What I mean is sidestep some of the potential damage to your holdings. And then Yes, there are ways to be successful among volatility. Certainly, first and foremost, know the direction and not just the direction. It's really important to have actual stops in place. If the markets hit a certain level, then you know more potential downside is ahead. We are going to review that. And then also, you want to use historical precedent to create your game plan. And certainly now we are seeing the markets deteriorating in the face of increased trade war fears. And using historical precedent, we will get into that. I'm gonna show you some areas among and within the broader markets that did and have a propensity to get harder hit during these trade war fear periods. And May deterioration will be the most recent in these markets. Also, we can go back to that significant decline in December, and that was also precipitated by an increased fear of an uptick in the trade war. So we will get into that. Also, very, very important that you have an exit plan in place. And certainly for those of you that are longer term with your trading, you are not going to be as active in this market. The longer term trend for the markets remains up. So uh, this would be more for those that are a bit shorter term in nature. So you will want to uh, have a plan so that you can exit your stock in a timely fashion and then know where the strength is in the markets. We are going to get into that today. Playing the strength in the markets is a potential way to counterbalance the downside. Now, I'll say today, even in those defensive areas, they are also getting hit as well. And then you do want to have a list of stocks that you are familiar with. And this is going to be critical in the sense that when this downtrend reverses, you want to have this basket of stocks that you can monitor that you are familiar with in the sense that they trade in a particular fashion. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get into that as well. So this first item I'm sharing with you today is quite simply a view of the MCHI, which is the China ETF. And what I've done is overlaid the S&P 500 index. And quite simply, what I did want to show you is the parity. The fact that in essence, the US markets, of course, the China 
Chinese markets are already closed. This is from May 31st. It's not current, but you can get grasp the uh, context or the sense that there is certainly a lot of mirroring going on. So one item or thing that you can do prior to the markets open quite simply is take a look at how China's market is performing. Oftentimes, if they close down and they do so on big volume, you will see similar action in the S&P 500. Another uh, ETF that you can pay attention to is the Vanguard FTSE Europe ETF, VGK. And this is a highly liquid, widely followed ETF that follows Europe. And again, take a look at really how similar the action is. So uh, the Europe ETF is still going to be open when the US markets open, but both of these can be quite simply helpful for you. It's pre-market action. You want to get a sense of how the US markets might open. Those two indices can be really quite helpful. Let's talk about having an exit plan in place. This is uh, something that I have seen over the years to be really, really powerful as an indicator. One is when you're viewing your individual stocks, if that RSI moves below that 50 level, that is one signal, but you're not going to want to uh, bail if only one of these signals is in place. You will want to see two or three. Uh, in this case, also, I take a look at MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. We'll take a look at some examples. And when that MACD goes below that net neutral zero, so when you have these two in conjunction, as well as paying attention to the simple moving averages on your stocks, and so 10, 50, 200 day, as a stock breaks below that 50 day, that's one of my golden rules of thumb, you will want to exit that stock. There is one key characteristic that works in tandem with these three indicators that is really going to be quite telling, and that is volume. So if we see a break below a key moving average, or the RSI or MACD turn negative, and that occurs on volume, that is going to give you the conviction that it is time to exit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the markets now where we are. I'll give you a sense of some of these uh, areas of support that you can pay attention to. So we're looking at SPX, that's the S&P 500 large cap index. This is a daily view of that index. So each bar is one day of trading activity. I talked to you about that RSI turning negative. So that is what occurred last week. I'm gonna go ahead and change this lower quartile here so that we are looking at stochastics. I find them to be a bit more useful than the MACD when you are looking at broader market indices. So uh, gone ahead and updated that. So let's take a look at the position of the S&P 500. I talked about breaks below simple moving averages. This green line is your 10-day simple moving average. The red is your 50-day. And then the blue line here is your 200-day simple moving average. So we can see that last week we did break below that 10-day simple moving average. Going into the close on Friday, the markets were able to find support at this upward trending 50-day simple moving average. So we were still in good standing. But of course, today's 2% drop, we are seeing a break below that 50-day simple moving average. Now, what I've done is highlight it with this blue line, this next area of support that takes us to that 28 50 level. And the reason for that is because it is taking us back to this prior peak in price back here in March. So our first indicator or our first break was below the recent highs. Then we go to the March high. So from there, your next possible area of support is going to be that 200-day simple moving average, which is right now at 2790. So we are looking at 
uh, currently the markets are at 28.66, so a bit more of a drop potential as far as looking for that next area of support. Let's go ahead and move down and take a look at the stochastics. And this indicator is yet another momentum indicator. You want to pay attention not only to the slope, but the actual position. The stochastics turned negative last week. They broke below that 50 level. So you can see that the markets are struggling. I'm going to go ahead and share a different view with you today because the daily is going to be a bit shorter term. We're going to drill out and take a longer view here. This is a weekly view of that S&P 500. So each bar is one week of trading activity. This red line is your 50 day simple moving average. And then the blue line is your 200 day simple moving average. So what I've done here is you can see the RSI is positioned up here. And today it is now at 49. So it is a bit negative. We've had these other dips before. This is taking us back. Uh, certainly that May period would be more than a dip. It did wind up being a correction, but we were able to recover from that. What I have pointed out here are periods of deterioration that were quite a bit more than that May uh, drop, that May correction. And so from here, what I did want to point out to you are some of the characteristics of these deeper uh, declines. So I'm taking us back in this initial period. This is the beginning of 2018. And on this weekly chart, we of course had a very tough period in that uh, period back then. And take a look at the uh, MAC RSI back in that time period. And we can see it kind of waffled around here. It did eventually dip below during this really severe drop in the beginning of 2018 in April before the markets turned positive. So we can see that the RSI may or may not be quite as good an indicator, but we're going to take a look at a more the really uh, bear market period that started last fall. But let's take a look at the MACD here on the bottom. And again, I'm going to go ahead and change that so that we are looking at the stochastics. They do tend to be a bit more helpful when we are looking at these broader market indices. And we are going to, of course, key in on those characteristics. This is what I talked about as far as using history as your guide. So let's go back again to that 2018 period. We can see that the stochastics bounced around. Again, that April break is when we really saw uh, the RSI dip just a bit and that Mac, the stochastics on the weekly drop. So let's go ahead and look at uh, these the bear market period that began last fall. Uh, this dashed line is pointing to you the period when the RSI turned negative, and then also when the stochastics turned negative, and then actually was in the beginning of October. So we're looking at a weekly period. Take a look at the volume. I mentioned to you that you are going to want to key in on volume characteristics. So now we have historical precedent. Let's take a look on this weekly chart at where we are now. We can see that the RSI on the weekly is at 48 right around that 49 level. So we are dipping below into negative territory. Moving on down, let's take a look at the stochastics. And the stochastics are trending downward, but we are still above that 50. So we are not entirely in negative standing right now. The other characteristic taking us back to that bear market is the broader markets broke below that 200 day simple moving average. And we are still above that 200 day simple moving average. So using a longer term view can be really quite helpful as far as helping you determine not only where the markets are, but have a plan and for going forward. Next up, we are going to take a look at some of these defensive areas as well as some of the inverse funds that you might want to take a look at. So we will be right back after this. The Chart Watchers newsletter features expert technical commentary about the current market from some of the industry's leading technical analysts. See what's really happening in the markets through their eyes and gain an edge in your own investing. 
the newsletter is packed full of insightful and educational articles intended to help you become a better investor. Whether you are brand new to charting or a seasoned technical analyst, each edition will provide a wealth of informative content. It's the best way to stay informed on all the latest news, events, updates, and additions here at StockCharts.com. Whether it's a new feature or blog, an upcoming conference, or a special sale, you'll hear it first in the Chart Watchers newsletter. So now what we are going to do, we've reviewed the broader markets. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the individual sectors as well as indices to get a better sense of really just where we are. So this first candle glance view, what I've done is gone ahead and input some of the various indices as well as those sector ETFs. XLY is consumer discretionary, XLK is the technology and so forth. We also have gold as well as the volatility VIX index. So from there, I've gone ahead and added an RSI, that relative strength indicator. We can then sort this by descending. I want to see where the potential strength is in this really weak broader market. So over here on the upper left, we can see volatility up front and center. Volatility index is up 22%. And that makes a lot of sense given the action in the markets. And also that volatility, that VIX is now above that 20 level. And by most standards, if we get up above 18, that is indicating a market that is in a difficult period. So from there, we can see that gold is rallying. It's up almost 2% on the day. And it had a pretty good week last week. It had a period on Wednesday when the Fed came out uh, where it really recovered nicely from a potential break. So gold stocks up here in the forefront. Utility stocks, not quite positive, but they are holding in. The broader markets now are down about 3%. Utility stocks are flat. The next is the consumer staples, XLP. Of course, all of this is going to make sense uh, because these are your higher yielding stocks and they do tend to be uh, act well when the markets are in a tough period. Uh, from there, we can see that the uh, XLC, that's your communication services, dominated by Facebook and Google. It is up here in the forefront because last week, uh, internet stocks really held in uh, quite well, despite the broader market's difficulty toward the end of the week. But today, of course, it, they are getting hit breaking below that 50-day. The semiconductors down another 3%, adding to last week's 6.5% drop, and so on. So uh, it, we can see that the Dow index is really getting hit. And we can, we'll go ahead and take a look, because a lot of these, uh, the Dow, these industrial stocks, any kind of prolonged trade war, any global growth deterioration, these industrials are going to stand to lose the most. And then, of course, consumer discretionary is getting hit. That new round of tariffs is aimly, uh, is squared, sorry, but it is very much hitting these discretionary stocks because a lot of these retailers are going to have to increase pricing due to the tariffs. Uh, again, that September round is targeting uh, apparel and shoe wear uh, and so forth. So we there we are with the individual indices and taking a look there. Let's go ahead over to this members dashboard. And what I want to show you is take you to the market movers page. This is a look at the top 10% up on the Dow. But what I'm going to do is transfer this so that we're looking at the S&P 500. And there actually is some green here on your screen. What I wanted to point out to you is the fact that you can then, by looking at this, you can then go ahead and request a candle glance view of those stocks that are in essence bucking the trend. The reason I want to do this is because you want to see are any of these stocks of note and worthy of going and drilling down further. What we have overlaid on here, again, this is a two month thumbnail snapshot. Each bar is one day of trading activity. And then overlaid on top of that 
are the 20 day simple moving average. That's your blue line. And then the red line is your 50 day simple moving average. So quite simply, when I'm viewing this, I am not interested in Exelon, EXC. The stock is below these key simple moving averages and they are trending downward. Likewise, with a biomed, it looks like a gap down bounce that is not worthy. But instead, I would prefer to look at TSN. I do know that they came out with earnings, reported very solid results. And then also, you want to take a look at, as another possible potential, this Northrop Grumman NOC. And this is another stock that is now above these simple moving averages. And then last one is WEC, because we talked about utility stocks. This could be a candidate. The utility space is underwater, but this particular stock is above ground. So let's go ahead and do just that. We're looking now at Tyson TSN daily chart. We can see that this breakout here, the stock has now broken out of a very long base, a two-month base, RSI and MACD are positive. Now, of course, given the market dynamics, we may not be very well served looking in uh, some of these areas, but gold, uh, TSN is a consumer staple stock. Gold and energy are certainly uh, territory that you could find potential candidates. Uh, this is Newmont Golding, uh, Gold Corp, NEM. And what I wanted to show you here is that the stock broke back above this 10 day simple moving average. We can see the RSI is poised to turn positive. And then your MACD is down here above that net neutral zero. So you're in good standing. Ideally, we would like to see that cross over the black line up through the red, <clears throat> but this certainly would be a candidate. Let's go ahead and take a look at that energy stock, WEC. And we can see that the stock really is holding up well above this 10 day simple moving average. Your RSI and your MACD are both up there in positive territory. So that's a good way when you are, if you are a more active trader, go ahead to that members dashboard and take a look. Now, we I talked about the Dow. We can take a quick look at what is really driving the deterioration. And you can bet it's all about Apple. This is one of those consumer products that is due to get hit. And certainly uh, the China tariffs are not going to be good for that particular stock. And then we can see some of these other industrial type names, Dow, uh, UTX as well. So that's a quick snapshot there. Let's go ahead and I talked about some of these inverse funds that you can put on your radar screen as a potential way to counterbalance the negative action. This first one, ticker symbol is SH. This is the S&P 500. What you are doing in S is, essence is shorting the S&P 500. What I wanted to point out to you here is the action in May. That's one of the most recent periods when we had that 10% correction in the S&P 500. And take a look at what the progression looked like as far as coming out of this downtrend. Of course, we had a very positive period going into May. So we can see that your first leg up here uh, for my work, I want to see any index, any stock breaking up above this downward trending 50 day simple moving average. And in essence, we are getting that today. Uh, this SH did start to perk up last week, certainly toward the end of the week as the broader markets turn negative. So now we've gapped up. We're up 2%. It's up above this 50 day simple moving average. We've had other gaps up here in May. This is an example. So we can see that the index, in this case, SH, has been able to progress higher beyond that. And the MACD is currently poised to turn positive, and your RSI is positive. Let's take a look at another one, DOG. This is the Dow 30. You are shorting the Dow in this case. Again, using May as your guide, you can also go back to that December tough period when the trade war fears escalate it as another example, but may would be more relevant because you are coming from out of a downtrend. So we can see, again, this started to pick up last week, another index that gapped up. We've had other periods of gapping up. So 
uh, this could be another potential candidate. PSQ is the you're shorting the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ. This one is up 3% today. You can see that tech stocks were really hit very hard as they will tend to be during these trade war fears. So it had more of an uptrending phase in that May period. So we can see this gap up. We're getting big volume today. Day, but similar to a stock, I wouldn't chase any of these indexes. Look for a pullback. We can see other periods where this gapped up. Back here in May, it gapped up, pulled back, gapped up, pulled back. So do not chase. That's rule number one, certainly in any market environment. Now we're going to look at SPXS. This is the S&P bear three times. So it's up 7% today. But uh, naturally, like any of these three times indexes, you'll enjoy the ride up, but it will also deteriorate quickly. So you need to know what you are trafficking in uh, as an example. So that is a look at some of the uh, kind of defensive ways. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you can uncover possible candidates in these more defensive areas of the market. And for those of you that watch my show, you'll be familiar with this. We're looking at the scooter, I'm sorry, the sector, sector summary. And so these are the sectors sorted by performance today. Again, we can see tech getting hit quite hard. Financials are getting hit due to the currency uh, volatility, but we want to focus on areas that you, you can look to, to as a way to, uh, again, counterbalance some of this downside action in the broader markets. So from there, you can take a look within here, we're looking at utilities. You can then look at the sub-industry groupings and the initial, this is a, a larger group within uh, conventional electricity stocks. What I like to do is sort that by scooter rating, but we can see that some of these better rated stocks, these are solar that are uh, not doing so well today, but drilling down further, this 80 and uh, 75 into 85 can be a really sweet spot for the scooter rating as far as looking for potential candidates. And of course, uh, today the markets are getting hit, so you are not going to see uh, every single name here up, but you can certainly then identify candidates that are in uptrends. And FE does appear to be a bit of a smaller name. I do tend to like some of these bigger names. Uh, we can take a look at ES. And we can see that this stock, this is Eversource. It pulled back very modestly to this 50-day simple moving average. This is in line with the action in the broader XLU. So when you see a stock pull back and it's in line with that index or with its sector, it's not as alarming. And we can see that it's bouncing off quite nicely off of that upward trending 50-day simple moving average, RSI trending upward, MACD up in positive territory, poised to turn up. So that exercise that we just did here for the utility stocks, you can very simply do that for the other defensive sectors that are uh, out there. So I will very quickly uh, go ahead into this. This is the, actually, we do not want consumer discretionary. We do want consumer staples. And so from here, we can go ahead and take a look, for instance, at soft drinks, defensive area, rank that by scooter and then drill down and take a look at some of these other potential candidates here. Uh, Coke is certainly not acting particularly well, but this would be a way you can then get that thumbnail shot and drill down and find uncover potential candidates. I will go ahead and leave it at that. Uh, for those of you actively trading, uh, stay safe. The markets certainly are not performing well today, but uh, hopefully, Hopefully today's action, we've been able to share with you ways that you can trade this volatility. Happy trading. Mm -hmm.